to the future, Rick. Hey, yep. Yes. Good evening, everybody. The little sports center. Uh, a little update. <laughs> Rick yeah. Roger. Nice. Uh, there you go. It was a soccer score. Was that a soccer oh. score? It's either one nothing or zero zero. Well, it can't be zero zero. <laughs> either one nothing or one one. That's all they scored in soccer. Okay. You know. <laughs> the, Thanks, the Brad, laugh. Thank you for the laugh. <laughs> yes. Uh it is seven oh two. We're gonna wait one minute and then we're gonna start. Okay. Good. Roger and Gene, we didn't have any time for our useless banter. How were you? Oh, well, we can make up for it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not at everybody's expense, we're not. Yeah. How are you, Roger? <laughs> Roger, how are you? I, I'm sorry. I, I'm very well. Thank you. Thank but, you. And how are you, Gene? Uh, you, Gene, you're being very formal. Uh, I'm very, very well. Hi, Jack. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jack. Yeah, don't, yes, right. I'll probably get in a problem for saying that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, everybody delete that no uh, you know what I, <laughs> I am getting the dad joke mode all right somebody just called me out for dad joke the female in the room oh it's dear the female in the room yeah I, and i'm sure if my son is on or when he listens he's gonna oh, scold dear. me from it he'll be like dad just get to the just get yeah. to the point yeah. nobody wants to hear it <laughs> all right okay. I, I could just hear it if i don't have it now i'm sure the email will be coming good evening everybody Thanks for being here. Last webinar of the year, I think we had three of them. We did a September, we did a um, mid-year, and we're doing a closing of the year as we come to the end uh, with about three weeks left to go. But we we all, everyone included, never stops because summer is just a short time away and then the calendar turns and we're, we're ready to go. I, I like doing these three times a year unless there's a need. I, I What I notice and what I hear is that people don't always jump on. And I know we've got maybe just uh, 50, 57 people on now, but I know some people listen to them at different times. Um, and I've always thought these are a wonderful tool to get information across. And um, we can never overshare and get enough information out there. So uh, we're gonna go one hour and rumor has it that Mr. Corella has a very full agenda. So, let me introduce the team here. Mr. Corella is here, and he has a very, he's got a lot of notes in front of him, so everybody should watch out. Ray has a lot of scribbling in front of him, which is typical, but um, which is typical, but um, I know he'll have some salient and wonderful updates. Maria has got a pack of papers that I think have nothing to do with the webinar. But she'll give. There will be some HRO updates, and then we have we we have finally created a bullpen um, that if, or a Miss America pageant that if any of us cannot take the medal, take and, and fulfill our obligations like Miss America, we have somebody named Mr. Woten who can step in and take the crown if we're unfamiliar or unable to fulfill our mission over the course of this next one hour. He is in the bullpen, ready to go. And if one of us uh, has to bow out for poor syntax, grammar, or any kind of um, um, any kind of poor use of the English language, he'll be jumping right in. So let me start because I know Corella's got a lot. He'll be second on the day, so get ready. We have four questions. I'll take two of them. Um, okay. Rick will take one. Oh, the bullpen will be called for one, and um, Rick will take another. Well, Maria will take the COVID question. You got the COVID one, Maria? All right. I uh, want to begin with a little bit of an unorthodox update. I can't tell you all how important it is to, uh, and this is for administrators, teachers, all staff, to ser take seriously and drill our safety protocols. I want to commend, I don't want to call people out, but I want to commend Geraldine Mann. Uh, they had a medical emergency on Friday. The entire team, the entire team handled it in a textbook fashion. The best news is the medical emergency was taken care of, everyone's safe and healthy. But it was a call to action to practice everything we do. And uh, kudos to GJ Mann for the way they handle it from the classroom teacher to our nursing staff, to the entire school, 
to the principal. I couldn't be more proud. And the, even their post uh, post incident reaction review, which they concluded today, was top notch. I bring that up because we cannot let our guard down ever when it comes to student safety. Please take very seriously all of the drills that you do. Please listen and participate to the best of your ability. You never know what type of emergency could come in front of you. Uh, I just think that the way it was handled was expertly, everything was thought of. There was even a, a small issue where sometimes you do fire drills over and over, but you never block a door. They had a door block, I'm using a metaphor here, so I don't want to throw you off, but they had a door blockage kind of issue. And the teacher who was receiving that uh, couldn't, couldn't receive all the information, made a call on the spot and made a judgment decision that was uh, expertly done. So I just want to say that uh, your training and your fast thinking certainly came into play. Congratulations. Next, Ray will probably illuminate this a little bit more or punctuate me, but I can't tell you enough in writing and in verbal uh, reminders the importance of fishing. I got fished again last, last week. My fish last week was, hi, Mark, I have a sore throat and I can't talk, but if you could email me some of this information for a project we're working on. And the project was legitimate. It was something, it was, it was a project we were actually, it was a construction project uh, for our building trade students that we're actually working on. And then I had been to a meeting before and uh, the, the tip off for me was, I have a sore throat and I can't talk. That seemed a little bit out of the ordinary for the person who sent it because he has my cell phone number, he could text me, a lot of things. But um, I <clears throat> actually paused <clears throat> before I responded. And then I realized it was probably a fish, which it was. So learn that we all can be fished. I'm fished frequently. Fishing season never closes and you don't need a license. It happens. A couple of important year-end dates this Saturday uh, is class day for Niagara Falls High School. It's, uh, it starts at the uh, high school, goes down um, Porter Road, through Robbins Drive, up Pine Avenue. If you get a chance, I guarantee at uh, 10, 10.30, 70 degree weather, dry, clear, a lot of honk, honking horns, get out there and support the kids. Also, the following weekend is the prom and post-prom. I know that the high school team, Mr. Slayman at all does a great job. The post-prom could always use donations and help and gift certificates and gift cards for our students. That is the following Friday into Saturday until two o'clock. We want our kids to be safe. Graduation is a ticketed event. It's Thursday, the 27th this year on our football field. field. If it rains, we'll go to Friday at six o'clock. And if it's still raining, we'll go to Saturday at 10 o'clock. I am predicting a um, uh, the evening at six o'clock to be 78 degrees with a light breeze out of the Northwest. Uh, um, it will be a nice evening. Uh, there'll be some scattered clouds. So the 450 graduates certainly deserve that. Uh, Mr. I won't steal Mr. Corella's thunder because he has a lot of summer updates. Uh, you know, we have a truncated, well, not truncated, but we have a smaller ELP program, three weeks. We have our summer sports camp. Rick will get into all of that. I particularly would like him to focus on, um, I particularly feel like he should focus on some of the uh, the trainings that are going on. I'll, I'll leave it there. Capital projects and safety. Window film will all be installed by August 1st. Uh, that window film is in first floor rooms. If you see bubbling, don't worry about it. Don't push it out. Just let your principal know. We'll have it all fixed. The day school lets out the 27th. That's when the construction of our vestibules will take place, our secured vestibules. Uh, they'll start taking place then. That uh, the air conditioning at Gaskill and LaSalle, 
the ceiling tiles in the hallway will stay exposed through November 1st of next year. So some of you, uh, it's not the most sightly look right now. It's very secured. And we don't want to put the ceiling tiles up to start school, take them down, incur more cost. The only thing that is holding our air conditioning at the two schools up is the delivery of electrical devices, which when we ordered them had 50 weeks of lead time. And our hope is to kick on the air condition, to cut the ribbon on the air conditioning at Gaskill and LaSalle uh, sometime around mid-May of next school year. So you've got to endure these last couple of days and you've got to endure September. Um, that's that's kind of where we are with safety and capital projects. Maria may jump in with more information on staffing, but let me tell you where, where we're at. Um, she and I and the principals, the principals through Maria have begun meeting uh, regularly. They communicate with her quite frequently. Um, we are, I think we're ready for our first round of phone calls, Maria, is that, is that super answer? Just about ready for our first round of phone calls. If you do not receive a phone call, do not panic. Do not call my office. Do not call Maria's office. Do not call Dan, Rick, Ray, your principal. We are, it is a very nuanced, complex uh, uh, process. We, we, uh, we take our time. Uh, we're trying to do it thoroughly. We look very heavily at two things, uh, regular sub or teaching assistant evaluations and principal recommendations. If you don't receive a call this week, you may receive a call next week. By June 20th, we hope to have about 80% of it done. So even if you didn't receive a call then, uh, don't, don't panic. We will then use the next week and a half to make additional calls up till July 2nd. If uh, after July, after the 4th of July, you haven't heard, uh, you want to know, and you know nothing, and you're in the you're in the teaching ranks, that would be the certificated ranks, you can send me an email and I will either ask to meet with you or um, make a phone call with you. Please do not do that until after July 4th. There's no need now to rush in to see me. There's no need to, to get nervous or uh, if, uh, upset. If you haven't received a call this week, you might get one next week. We're, we have 1,452 employees and we're trying to close school, get ready for a board meeting, uh, do et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I would tell you to be patient until after the 4th of July. And then if you're listening or hear this and haven't heard anything, start with me. I will give you a direct answer on where we are. Oh, and I would still tell you, unless there's a particular reason, um, meaning that there was no recommendation or no jobs, don't lose faith. Uh, we will have our next board meeting for voting on August 29th. Uh, we will move, we move the last seven to, five to seven percent of the staffing in the summer. So we get 80%, we get to 93%, and then over the summer we finish the last five to seven percent. I want to thank, um, I'm going to come off of staffing, Maria could correct me if I said too much, too little, or didn't say enough. Uh, I want to um, jump into, um, I want to jump into some thanks I want to commend the Niagara Falls High School staff, the administrators, the entire staff and faculty. Uh, they had what we called a reset <clears throat> since Easter. They had a couple of very unfortunate incidences where teachers were injured. The staff, the administration did one heck of a job, one heck of a job in the last 10 weeks. And they were doing a great job to begin with, but they really pulled it together uh, after some uh, not not great uh, instances which were you know could happen anytime anywhere but they really recommitted themselves and I'm, I'm really proud of them i said this at the board meeting last 
Thursday, and I'm going to say it again. Thank you to all the staff, faculty, and the administrative team. Uh, they, they did a lot of good things. Now, I also want to thank the students. They're not on this call. But, um, and I know, as Ms. Villardo said, the students weren't always happy, but we have to do what we need to do to keep safety first. And they really did it. The, uh, I've been trying <clears throat> before the call to read the governor's uh, legislation book. And um, the, only, uh, the only germane both house passing laws that I can see are APPR, it passed both houses, it's on the governor's desk to turn it back to local control. No timeline on it, but that can't, that's coming back to local control. I'm nearly assured that she'll sign that. Um, the, other, the other issues, there's some district issues about um, IDAs, industrial development agencies. There's some issues about serving on that. There's some issues about civil service and once Ms. Massaro gets more information about the changes in the civil service law, it's about changing, reviewing questions every five years that passed. I have nothing new on the governor's stance on cell phone, banning cell phones. There's nothing that I can read or find through my listservs and sources that say that that went any further. I know many people were looking for that, but I don't see anything in the list of bills that are on her desk. And, and I was reading them quickly. I can't, I may have missed it, but I don't see anything. And I think we would have seen more. I know the Board of Regents met today and will meet tomorrow. I didn't, I didn't listen to the Board of Regents meeting, but I, I did speak to a couple of news sources. Uh, the point of that meeting was to get agreement on the graduation requirements, which um, I think are very good, an implementation plan and an implementation timeline. More to come on that. Um, say yes, we're moving forward with say yes. You know, that's a, uh, next year will be a full planning year. As a matter of fact, we had a call today and June 26th will be uh, our first meeting to ask for an inaugural uh, leading donation. Uh, we have to raise $16 million to provide scholarships for kids beyond their Pell, TAP, et cetera in perpetuity, uh, but we're hoping to land our first and leading gift on June 26th. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, and I'm thinking we can land it uh, and we will keep you posted, but next year will be a planning year for the Say Yes program and we will spend more time talking about it. I'm gonna close my section down um, and I think I'm gonna ask Rick to talk a little bit more about one of the issues that I'm gonna give a lead into, uh, but this deals with <clears throat> the science of reading and the governor's back to basics statement. Right. There was a brief 40 minute webinar that Rick, myself, a couple of teachers attended last week. And I think you can download it, pick it up. Um, this was from the state education department. It really turned into be about 18 minutes because after they thanked everybody for 22 minutes, it was about 18 minutes of content. And I want to I want to tell you um, what I received out of the call that the governor has something called back to basics. That's not what was talked about in the call. I don't know what she means by that. Um, we are supposed to get information on that prior to January 1st, 2025. I don't know what she means by back to basics. I don't, that wasn't discussed. What was discussed is the state's continued flexibility on things related to um, curriculum audits. And I will tell you, mainly because of the work of Mr. Carell and his team, the district is, is in a perfect position uh, with that those issues, this, uh, including the science of reading. Um, so um, he will talk to you about one of the uh, one of the moves we're going to make next year regarding third grade, mid year science of reading. I ready. He and the team have a really good plan. Right now, in front of the board for a vote on the twentieth, is the new math curriculum. I ready in elementary and a new math curriculum in seventh grade. 
uh, there's a lot of training that has to happen and the science of reading which is a very we we could spend five hours on a webinar trying to talk about it um, i'm really comfortable with rick's understanding of it he has studied it along with members of his team our team and i'm really comfortable where where we are however the science of reading and the webinar that we've talked about requires some work to be done in third grade next year. And I, I wanna set the stage for it. Don't panic. I fully support this work. I fully believe we need to do this work for third grade classes next year. Rick has a very reasonable, thoughtful approach to it. Uh, but uh, we need to, uh, if we have one minor area that we've gotta just make a little bit of a movement on, it's third grade. I'm gonna stop, I'll answer two questions, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Rick. The first question is, because Earl's not here, there's uh, custodial issues. If your room, your classroom, your area, whatever it is, is not clean, every school should have a form. Um, I've seen it used at multiple schools. You should, and your room has not been clean satisfactory. You need to fill out that form and give it to your administrator. From there, your administrator will meet with his or her custodian. They'll have a response. They'll have a remediation plan, but I'm not gonna get into any specific schools or areas or rooms, but anyone who is not satisfied with the cleanliness of their room. And again, um, we are often, um, we often have substitute cleaners, et cetera, changes in the cleaning staff, you need to complete a written form so that um, so that it gets in a paper trail and you uh, should turn that into your principal. The regents exams were given at the prep level uh, to a uh, to students. Um, uh, the, pardon me. They haven't. They didn't do math. They didn't do the math last week on the fourth. Oh well, the, that that they would have done. Yeah. Either the, either the Regents exam on the 4th or at the end of the year. I can, I don't, I'm not sure about, yeah, I was gonna say, I know it's been, I know the, um, I know one of my answers to it, and Rick can take off from there, is that um, we, we, in the middle schools, uh, we like to, we, we need all of the school day education we can for the other students, and the administrators felt that in a small room in testing, setting where kids were used to taking tests in middle school as opposed to large cafeterias auditoriums gymnasiums um, be, uh, because there's not the volume of kids that's why the schedule didn't change it was for comfort of location in a normal academic setting so i appreciate the question rick is chomping at the bit to give you all of his updates and so we stay in the time frame here he is Good evening everyone uh, I think I'll start with what Mr. Lori started talking about the, the science of reading and how it uh, is being enacted in our district. So let me begin by saying that the, the science of reading isn't a program, it's not a curriculum, it's a body of research about scientifically based practices that have been proven to work best for teaching students to read. The current conversation though it applies up through high school, is really focused right now on grades K through three. There is some disagreement, and there certainly are different studies that are out there that we can look at that might contradict certain positions. But I think one thing that is widely agreed upon is that some school districts uh, have not devoted enough instructional time and instructional uh, fidelity to teaching uh, phonemic awareness and phonics in a systemic, comprehensive, research-based way. Uh, so that is the, I would say, largest area of improvement for all school districts. We are well situated because we have, uh, we adopted the foundations, uh, foundational skills program, uh, over a dozen years ago. Uh, we needed to do quite a bit of work this year to strengthen the our implementation, uh, including reaching out to and training new teachers 
who were not part of the original implementation. We have done it, but there's more to do. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about next steps uh, for foundational skilled inst instruction in our district. Then I've got some other updates that I will go on to. First off, I want to uh, put a plug out there for the TRC summer catalog. Uh, I know that it was shared on Friday and the, the registration for it opens on June 17th. But there are two uh, slates of trainings and workshops in the catalog that um, are very connected to major district initiatives. And one of them is uh, teaching the foundations program. Um, many of you who teach currently in grades K through two probably know that we had three of our district uh, PEP teachers this year trained to be in district facilitators. They went through a very rigorous series of courses. They had to be observed by um, trainers from Wilson Language and they had to get a certification that will enable them to do our internal district training, which is great for capacity building because they can do so much with our teachers in so many different formats and venues. And we don't have to continually contract with the Wilson language um, facilitators and hope that they can come to district when we need them. So uh, that would be uh, Tammy Zaker, Lynn Pasek, and Karen Skronik. We're going to add one more person next year that so that we will have four folks. The reason that the fourth person is coming on uh, primarily is to take care of and train for third grade. As Mr. Lori mentioned, uh, we have actually implemented foundations prior in grade three. However, uh, that hasn't been the case in, I believe, about eight years. It uh, was taken out of the curriculum and now it is it really needs to go back so we are going to do what i call a structured rollout for that we the timing this year um, we have a new math program starting and i'll talk about that in a little bit um, so i don't want to distract teachers from their training and early implementation of the i ready math program which is uh, from grades K through six. So after we're up and running with iReady, starting sometime in January or February, we will begin training or retraining grade three teachers, getting them ready to teach the grade three foundation program. We'll have what I would call a soft start so that our folks can get trained, uh, begin to uh, implement some of the units, they won't get through the, uh, if you're a third grade teacher, you, would, you won't get through the whole curriculum. You'll only get through a very small portion of it, but we will get the training and work all the kinks out and then be able to start and hit the ground running in September of 2025. A couple other updates for everyone, K uh, to two. I mentioned the TRC catalog. Now that we have our in-district trainers, we have a full slate of really good foundations training that is ongoing this summer. You can see it in the TRC catalog. It's in the last section of the summer catalog. And it includes not only basic training for teachers who've never taught it before, that is called launch training, but we have created other workshops on, for example, um, using the Wilson language learning communities and fun hub, uh, lesson planning with data from the test tracker, uh, deeper implementation of the foundations activities, the three to four activities that make up the daily lessons. Um, and even a three hour workshop on classroom setup and organizing and managing the materials, both student and teacher that go with the program. So there's a lot of opportunity not just for new teachers, but for veterans to deepen their understanding of how to implement the program properly. Speaking of the test tracker, next year, the test tracker will be mandated for all teachers in grades K through two. This year, it was optional. We highly encourage teachers to use it. We, we train teachers to use it. 
um, and I got very good feedback on how much work and time it saves. But next year it's going to be mandated. And the reason for that is it is being upgraded uh, and it will allow us to track students' progress across the district. Currently, all we can see is the teacher's individual classroom. And those of you who, are, who are, have used it, you're familiar with how it, it uh, represents each of your students and whether or not they've mastered each skill at the grade level. But what next year's version will do for us is we can look at that same information district-wide, district-wide by grade, by school by grade, and then by school by teacher. So there's a lot more data reporting that, that will go with it. We'll be able to see our students' strengths and weaknesses. We'll be able to figure out where we need to target professional development. Um, so that is gonna be a real plus for us. I do wanna mention before we go off this subject that um, all of the workshops for foundations and many others that are in the TRC catalog are 90 plus approved. So whether you're a veteran teacher that already has your 90 hours, uh, you can avail yourself of these workshops. Some of them are three hours, up to up to uh, six hours, and you can you can put. Maria is punctuating. Okay. You can you can take as uh, many as you would uh, like to to get to either 10 hours, 15 hours, or 20 hours. Um, yeah, certainly you can do a combination of many things but they are uh, it's something else to put uh toward your uh, 90 plus stipend the same is true for uh our math program and for some technology offerings so i want to kind of go in a in a more organized fashion so let me go to iReady um, i put two postings out last week um, but we've already got quite a few responses there are um, a, there is a total of six hours of training available prior to the start of the school year for all iReady teachers, and that includes consultant special education teachers okay. uh, and ENL teachers. Anyone who will be co-teaching or lead teaching in a mathematics classroom K to six is uh, eligible. So, if you notice from the postings, there are uh, there are virtual off there's a virtual offering and there's one that's in person I've gotten some good questions about those because for the virtual offerings once we set everyone up through clever for the teacher dashboard you can log on and go to what are known as the OELs which are online um, educational learning courses we've selected three courses that when you take all of them will equal the three hours and the remuneration for that is either schedule B or clock hours for those who are still working on clock hours. The topics are very similar to the topics that are going to be covered in the in-person session that you could take either on August 5th, 19th or 20th. And that is by design. Because it's a brand new program, and there's a lot of information and a lot to learn, uh, it would be beneficial to have both a virtual overview and then an in-person workshop that will touch on much of the same content, but go deeper and everyone will have the opportunity to discuss and ask the presenter from Curriculum Associates uh, questions. So, a lot of folks have said, well, should I just take one or the other because they seem very similar. Please, if you have the time, take both. They, uh, taking both together will be most beneficial. The postings close on June 18th, so please make sure that you um, respond as soon as possible. In regard to teacher materials for iReady, um, I'm, I plan on doing a, um, a rollout similar to what we did last year when we transitioned to wonders for six of our eight schools um, we i have ordered all the teachers editions they are on their way to district once they arrive here they'll need to be inventory they'll need to be put in the uh, inventory system destiny they'll need to be barcoded and then signed to teachers we will do all of that here 
if we have the wind at our back and the truck pulls up fairly soon, we will be able to um, tell all of you to come to central office on the 25th and 26th of June to grab your teacher materials. It's uh, only two volumes, so it's not a, a full box. There are a lot of moving parts. Most of the materials are online. There are only two pieces that are, that are in hard copy. If the timing doesn't work for that, then after the 4th of July, we'll have a window of a couple weeks where you can come in to the reception area and central office during regular business hours and sign out your manuals. So more information on that, please check school email. I've already sent some information out on that, on letting people know that it's tentative, but keep on looking for, or checking rather, for some more definitive information. And I think the last thing that we want to talk, that I want to talk about is um, in the same TRC summer catalog are trainings that have to do with uh, tech technology. So they're into two main categories, clear touch. There are several different sessions for three levels of clear touch training. If for some reason you haven't taken beginner training, there's beginner training being offered. There's intermediate or part two training. And then there's also advanced training. Please check the catalog for the content of each of those. And then there is Schoology training for um, the prep and high school teachers. Schoology is not coming to the elementary level yet. We're kind of working backward with that. So that is uh, a learning management system. And some teachers are already using it, have already piloted it at Niagara Falls High School. But this summer, there will be beginner training, intermediate training, and advanced training. So not only would it be for teachers at Niagara Falls High School and the two prep schools, um, it would also be very helpful if you are someone who teaches in Pride in the Twilight program, or if you have a hybrid schedule and you teach some of your classes remotely. Um, those are all good offerings of uh, things that you will learn about and be able to turn right around and put in, into practice in September. So I think I have covered everything. If I have, if there's something I've missed, please put a question in the, uh, in the chat and I'll answer it or just email me. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Really good job. A punctuation on Rick Corella's stuff. Please, please look at the TRC catalog. Please look at the TRC catalog. Secondly, Rich mentioned postings. Uh, just this afternoon, Maria and I spoke about more postings that'll come out next week. We've got to do some work on them, but I'm going to ask you to stay really tuned in to your email for postings and super turned in to the TRC catalog for those offerings. Uh, we, we will be a Phonics K-3 district. We will meet the state requirements. We are on the precipice of doing that. Rick explained grade three we are in good shape we'll be in better shape we'll uh it makes it just just to me it makes sense i have to say i tell you that i tease rick because he's put the governor on me meaning he's slowing me down or as he likes to say keeping me on my leash because i would have opened up the um opened up the phonics in third grade to start the year but he's right we need your full attention and support for the math curriculum and uh, we are cognizant of all of the demands you have, especially in that grade level. So, uh, but please, please get ready and look for, as I said, more postings that will come out from Human Resources, even as late as next Tuesday or Wednesday with a five day turnaround. Don't stop looking until your last day because she is going to put some out next Wednesday and there will be a five day turnaround and you will need to respond. So uh, I know it's a busy time, a crazy time, but postings will not end. You'll probably see the last one around next Wednesday that will give you five days to respond. And they are for some very important areas. Again, punctuating Rick, TRC catalog imperative, imperative that you, you will be so much further ahead and I'm hoping that the truck has the wind and all the gasoline or electricity, or electricity, who knows these days, to get those iReady books here uh, for you to pick up uh, 
before the Rick's Rick's looking at his uh his uh, I ready truck traffic tracker, or he's calling Paul Hare from the Channel Two Traffic Division, or Dave Cash right now to see where Dave Cash. You ever see that guy in the morning? Yeah, Channel Two. Ah, that's what I watch. Two Channel Two. Dave Cash. You know, um, uh, Rick's checking the Dave Cash traffic tracker tracker for the I ready books. Let's turn it over to Ray Granary, who is next with always salient, effusive, and very interesting technology updates. Thank you very much and hello all. I have one or two thoughts for uh, this year and then more than one or two thoughts for uh, next year. Um, on the power school side, there's been a change. This is for teachers and for administrators. There's been a, a change to the student grade verification process. In the past, uh, there was this uh, custom piece that was on the side. And basically what this is, is teachers will go in Look at their grades. Uh, in this case, it would be uh, Q4 and Y1, and they'll say yes, yes, yes. I've looked at all these grades, and they are good. And administrators will go in and run a report and say that uh, 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 Rick, Stan, Mark, and Maria, yep, they did all their check marks, but Ray didn't. So then um, you got to go see Ray to say that uh, you got to look at your grades before we can print them. So there's going to be a built-in uh, Power School native tool that's going to be used now, and I'll be on the lookout for. It, it's it's very simple. It's the same concept. Uh, for what you're going to use on the teacher side and the administrator side for this. this is a kind of an important process so that everyone's on the same page when they go to print out report cards it's the best it can be. Uh, that'll be coming out in a week or so. Um, we are going to be uh, instituting for a reason or two. Uh, previously, it's been a long time in a summer school context that we've used uh, power school, the old Sims environment to run elementary summer school. So this year there's going to be, we've had some, um, some meetings to kind of work this out. But for anyone that's um, anyone that's in the summer school environment, prep in high school, all good, all the same. For the elementary side, and these really aren't formal courses, it's more like programming, uh, programming and things of that nature. It's all going to run through PowerSchool. The good piece is it'll bring all those inherent tools that we have from production PowerSchool into the summer school elementary. Um, moving forward, I just want to touch base on a couple things um, that's going to happen next year. You start to see a little bit starting this year. Um, in the context of devices, if you teach um, uh, grades three through six, you, we're going to be rolling over our device. You say goodbye to your old 11 laptop. It's going to be replaced by a brand new 500W, which is the new model that Lenovo is using um, for student classroom devices. Um, you also know, you also should notice a uh, marked improvement. I think we're in a pretty good spot with uh, wireless environments. But what we are doing this year is we're bumping up, we're getting to the ceiling of what's allowable uh, in school districts, which means it's uh, uh, internal traffic's gonna be bumped up to five gig. Most schools are at one gig, uh, you can be at two. If you, uh, now you can be at five and we're gonna move to five. So that's internal traffic, not external traffic. So you should see, although we're kind of working uh, fairly good now, it should be even better. And on top of that, in your classroom and throughout your school, if you look up, you'll see these wireless access points. There's 820 in the district this summer. We're swapping those all out for new wireless access points. Uh, it's always nice to have new things, but what really brings in with these wireless access points is it brings um, the ability to have enhanced um, uh, allows and controls, and it'll just make for a world, more robust environment. This is all about technology wherever rest. You can't just sit and say, I'm going to be in this environment. You always have to be uh, current and you always have to be um, relevant. Uh, another uh, device kind of update is that we are piloting and we've been piloting apples. Uh, Pre-K to two technology, which includes the NL. Um, and we've, always, we've been in a STEM and the arts environment. We're going to be in an enhanced environment. So I, I can tell you that um, we're in a pretty good spot. Once school settles in the fall, um, we're going to start looking to move into production because everything's kind of lining up nicely. Uh, so sometime around October, November, and this is production into the pre-K to two grade level. Um, this summer, we're going to, we, we typically, we try to, and we have been every summer, we look to the high school and we look to the arts and we uh, do iMac upgrade and we'll do that again. And the thing that has been a point from the superintendent to everyone through technology is we have to be better assistive technology. Yep. Um, we've engaged uh, UB uh, Center for Assistive Technology. We had meetings with them today. We're landing all the things. This is like the ultimate hired gun here for assistive technology. That's all they do. So they do it very well. Um, 
we have short-term contract with them, additional short-term contracts, and we're gonna get better when it comes to um, assistive technology. Just some quick software updates of what's coming new. Um, we are in this technology committee, we're going to be reviewing three candidates for new website management. Um, we'll decide, the technology committee decide if we're gonna stick with our uh, friend uh, final site, which we have now. Com the competition is coming from something called uh, Parent Square and Apogee. It's something that the superintendent and I uh, looked at. So we're, the technology committee is gonna review this and, uh, and make the decision if we're gonna stay where we're at uh, with the advantages or if we're gonna look to maybe make a move, which uh, we'll, we'll find that out relatively quickly. For any of our travelers out there, we're finally gonna have a new conference request system so that our uh, rest in peace to good old Lotus Notes and how we did it in the past. Uh, something that may not be super noticeable, but we're moving away from client server environment, which is called Versatrans. Uh, we're moving to tra Traversa, which is gonna bring all sorts of tools and uh, built in, again, built in, not tacked on, built in ways to help us see where buses are, where they're going, where they've been, um, all the way down to whatever granular lever we'll have. Uh, it's gonna start in using summer school. Um, for those of you, we still have to be in the fax world. For those of you, the office staff, we're gonna be student system. It's gonna go from the, the old analog fax system to an actual computer system that manages that. Um, we're gonna continue with AR, VR tools. Um, it's just super, super, uh, just really neat environment. And the thing is gonna, we're gonna separate from others is it's going to be custom content. We started that a little bit last year where we would have um, district staff included in AR VR tour. So that's really kind of exciting. Uh, Rick had mentioned Schoology. Uh, the floor right now is the programs that, that Rick had mentioned. Um, we are going to leak into classroom rollouts, but we just want to be literally certain all the stakeholders are prepared from the high school administrators to uh, the, all the hooks it needs uh, the technology behind before we move that into a classroom environment. Things get a little higher. Uh, just quickly, um, Windows 11 is coming. I know you say, well, I've had Windows 11 for three years, but you just would be, I could put you to sleep in three minutes and talking about all the things that need to be in place for Windows 11 to be um, to be in an environment that we have to be. Um, cybersecurity, uh, I want to thank everyone. MFA is mostly uh, mostly complete. Yeah. And that, that really is one of the most impactful. You can't get cyber insurance if you don't have MFA. And, and we, ha we are cyber insured. Now we have MFA, so our rates will go a little lower, I think they should. Um, but that really, really does stop uh, someone from gaining um, uh, access to our to our environment. And really it's it's a phishing is it. 85% of the grief um, come from a phishing environment and I to Maria because um, what her what the HRO office is, they facilitate a trading session. And I can tell you, we spend lots of money, lots of energy on technical type safeguards, firewalls and you know, I could shoot out a bunch of acronyms for sure, make up some if I had to, but really the most effective means is people. People know now when to pause, the superintendent pause, other people pause. And that, that's what really stops us. That's what keeps us out of trouble. Um, I, I wanna ask people, uh, shifting topics, but underneath the cybersecurity is to please stay on the approved um, highway. That, um, it, it sounds like I'm trying to be a controlling person. I'm not, I want, we have a very robust offering, a very, um, rightful, whatever the word is, appropriate software, um, sometimes double down on things, but you have to kind of stay under the proof tougher. I can give you an example of what, what's being leaked out now, and it's a strategy. It's kind of a shaky uh, strategy, but this is what vendors do, and I'll give you an example. There's a piece of software there all called Camp. It's a really nice piece of software, right? It does things, maybe, maybe things a little quicker, better, different, easier, I don't know. We have three pieces of software that kind of do approved district sponsored, district um, paid for, district supported software that does the same kind of thing. It's uh, We have a robust Adobe um, subscription. We have something called Schmore, which the administrators use, which is really neat. And then we have a piece of software called Publishers. It's clunky, but it does work. But what's happening now is people are engaging in camera because it is kind of neat. It does things and maybe it's easier. But what's going to happen is what are you doing? You're signing up with Argonary, add on schools.net. So they're reeling this in and we're gonna get all this content attached to us. It's a free version, right? So you're not, you know, you're playing by the rules kinda, and then you get real comfortable and you have all that content built in and guess what happens? They're gonna say, we're gonna pull it unless um, you start to pay for it. So right. uh, if there's a piece of software out that you like, please, there's uh, the uh, Engage the Technology Committee. That's our job in life. 
it's a great group. It's, 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 I, I'm biased, I know, but we come to a Thursday meeting and we take things seriously. And if Canva is the tool, I'm just using this example, if Canva is the tool, right? And it's better than some of this and BOCES uh, can sponsor it. And it's all the things that we have with our um, way we evaluate stuff that we'll make a move on it. But I can tell you if engaging free software, what companies are doing, we got bit last year pretty hard. There we did. Um, it, we're gonna pay for it and it's, it's not worth it. And in just two minutes, uh, I'd like to talk about something that's really, um, it's exciting and it's, it's a revolution of what's coming. Um, this year coming up is the start of what we do our planning for our new uh, instructional technology plan and our comprehensive uh, plan. It's very important. We have to do this. It's technology committee driven. We've always done it with Fidelity. It's always been a wonderful document. If we don't do it, then that checklist that we're supposed to have done, we can lose out on things. Um, the, to get to my point is that the, the smartness or the thinking portion of this, these plans are what they call smart goals, right? And that's what we really kind of focus on. And the key to what we're going to do for everything is going to be artificial intelligence. That's where the revolution is coming. It's kind of a, an exciting thing. It can be a little bit terrifying. It depends on how you want to look at it. But where the focus of the technology committee is going to be is, is, is AI is here and um, it has to be regulated, but that's not where the energy is going to be. The energy from the technology committee is going to be, we're going to make the most efficient use of artificial intelligence. So it makes people better, it makes organizations better, and it makes functions better. So we're not going to use it to you know, replace people or shortcuts to get things uh, done um, quicker and faster, but you don't really know what you're doing. But this is what uh, people and technology and pretty much everything is a revolution. It's something that's coming and we're not going to be afraid of it. Um, we already have partners uh, in our university. We've already met with them. We're going to meet with them. Everyone both sees is coming to the technology committee on uh, Thursday of this week because uh, they're our main partners. Um, we have a couple people going to ISTE and they're going to ISTE with the charge of uh, what AI does because that's pretty much the signature uh, context that's being at this national convention. So it should be exciting for everyone, and I think it is, but we got to do it the right way. Thanks, Ray. Yeah, artificial intelligence is coming. We'll be there. The problem is it's coming fast, and we've got to we've got to keep pace with it. Just a couple of uh, punctuations from Ray's side. Stay on our highway, even if you're tempted, because it's free and it's good. If you if you find something free and good, send it to the technology committee, and they will vet it. Don't take it. We got burned, we had we had takers, and now we're paying for it. Stay on our highway. Secondly, um, don't ever give out personal identifiable information. We've had a big changeover. We changed over phones, smart boards, multi-factor authentication. Um, this, is, this is monumental movement and monumental work. Um, apples, Apple computers for young kids. Um, the implementation of security expert in every school is uh, coming. That's an alarm, a camera, a nuisance alarm, a warning for doors, not just for people who prop doors, but we do have some children who may like to escape. Um, and the alarms will sound for those children as well. So that is all coming. We do have new projector systems coming at Niagara Falls High School and some other places. and. The 880, uh, your classrooms will be touched because there's 880 wireless access points that need to be upgraded. So uh, along with artificial intelligence, I've been pushing, we've been pushing um, augmented reality and virtual reality. That is a way, to me, that is a way that ties into foundations because it brings to life background schema and knowledge that kids need to pair their sounding of words with with an understanding of what it looks like and an ability to read. I, I think I get that. Rick has been giving me a lot of tutorials on, uh, on the science of reading. So I think I understand it. Now somebody who's never boring um, and often suffering FOMO, Miss Maria Massaro. Hello friends, nice to talk to you all this evening. So a couple of things for all staff. Um, so Mr. Lori mentioned hosting coming up from the Human Resources Office, and he mentioned that they would be applicable to the certificated staff. But we will also be having a couple of 
think postings coming out um, for our classified staff, both the CSEA staff and the associate staff. So I would ask that um, you all, if you're on the call this evening, still continue to look for postings up until the end of the year. If we have to, in the associate unit, do any involuntary transfers, we will also do those. You may hear us call you in over the summer. It will not be a large scale transfer. So don't worry about that. I'm just mentioning it because at this time of year, we start to get some phone calls about it. Another piece of information for all units, if you are a staff member who has vacation days and you have received a vacation carryover request form and you have not turned that in yet, please do so as soon as possible. Those vacation carryover request forms were due about a week ago. We're still going to accept them and try to accommodate your request, but we'd ask you to get those in as soon as possible. Again, for all staff members, anyone who is expecting a perfect attendance bonus. I have been asked some questions about the perfect attendance bonuses. We have to wait till June 30th before we can look at your attendance days to be sure that you do in fact have perfect attendance for the year. So if you are an employee who is hoping for a perfect attendance bonus and you are allowed to have that under your contract, please wait until June 30th. We are going to be reviewing them and then we'll get in touch with you and we'll let you know the date you can expect your information on your perfect attendance bonus. Also for all district staff members, if you are a staff member who may be entitled to a public service loan forgiveness, whether or not you have already turned in your documentation to me in the Human Resource Office, we ask that you just maintain some patience just for right now. We have a lot of forms in our office to complete for folks, and it is a hugely busy time of year. We are going to get them all done for you as soon as possible. If you want to know whether we have received them, please reach out to me at any time and I will answer that question for you. If you want to know when you are going to be receiving it back, I'm asking for just a little patience at this time because we will get them done. Mr. Lori will sign them and we will get them back to you. We're just wanting to be sure that we pay enough attention to all of the things that are happening and not let anything fall by the wayside. Now, moving back to the certificated staff for just a moment, I was giving Mr. Corella a hand signal, which I shouldn't have done because that was rude and it took him off his game for one moment, but of course not for long. The reason that I was giving him the high sign was because for the 90 plus, I wanted to remind everybody that we still do need mentors for the mentor teacher program. And we need those of you who are interested in having what we call trainees for our teacher resident program. We're looking for those folks who qualify for 90 plus. And so I know you have a really great catalog in front of you for summer, but I would hope that you wouldn't forget that we need you to take resident students for 90 plus. For those of you who may have your cert certs expiring over the summer, you know that the deadline is August 31st. Yes. We are on top of this for you, but we can't do anything if you let your cert expire. We are not allowed to pay you as a certified teacher if you have an expired certification. So there are a number of you who are looking at your certificates expiring August 31st. Please be on top of that. If you need to contact our regional certification specialist, I can help put you in touch with her. If you have general questions, we can try to answer them in our office. But I'm just asking you to please be on top because there are quite a few of you who have certs expiring on August 31st. Finally, um, and again, if anybody has any questions, put them in and I'll try to answer those. I know I do have one question here that Mr. Laurie has asked me to address, but my last piece, is for those of you who need us to enter your superintendent statements for you. Um, we will be doing so after June 30th. When we enter those statements for, um, for you, it is always very helpful that we have the whole year completed. We do it mid-year and we do it all along if you ask us to, but 
you will get your letter that shows that you don't have enough time to get your professional certification if you don't have enough days. So we like to wait for natural breaking periods before we enter those superintendent statements. So again, that will occur also after June 30th. Finally, there was a question regarding COVID protocol. As far as I know, um, in terms of having days reimbursed to you for in, if you have COVID, there has been no change. Um, that has been extended for another year or at least until next March. I don't want to misspeak, but I know that at least as we're sitting here tonight, there has been no change with respect to your ability to be reimbursed days if you unfortunately get COVID and have to miss work. So that's all I know about um, COVID at this time. And those were all of my updates. If I don't speak to you, I hope everybody has a very nice summer and a great end of the school year. Thank you. Let me do some punctuating. Let me do some punctuating before we go to the bullpen. Uh, punctuating, a couple of things I heard. Certification is the responsibility of the professional, not the responsibility of the human resource administrator. The human resource administrator is there to aid, assist you, and guide you. She will do that. It is your responsibility to fulfill the requirements of certification. That's a professional responsibility that we all have to undertake. Uh, something about COVID days and other things like that. Something that Maria has said since we've begun working, if you ever have a dispute on days, don't panic, don't panic. Get your documentation together. We can always review and return if there is significant proof or sub substantial proof for for um, for individuals. Um, hold it. We can always go back. We will go back. We've done going back. Uh, COVID. You know, we, it, we uh, it's hard to even say the word, but there are laws still on the books. And when she said that, there she there are requirements that you have had to not taken COVID days previously. So it's not a new calendar or a new cycle or a new 10 or 15 days. I don't even know what it was anymore. That isn't re-upped. You may have already exhausted your COVID days, but if you have a question, ask. Don't surmise, don't ask the human resources administrator. She will help you. Um, yep, good. Uh, the other thing I, I can tell you before we go to the bullpen is that, um, we, we have a we have a light turnout but i would tell you that those that are on here to remind everyone that this webinar does exist tell a friend tell a phone tell someone and let them listen to the uh listen listen to the webinar i think we've shared some really good for information we'll go to the bullpen we'll tap on mr wooten uh to do a, a little bit of we won't call it mop-up work we'll call it answering a question work and he can We'll, we'll, we will rate him on how well he does. Mr. Rowe, good luck. <laughs> we're behind you. Win or tie. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Laura, thank you for that. Vote of confidence there. I had a question in regards to trauma-informed practices in, in moving forward for next school year. And absolutely, our partnership with the University of Buffalo is going to continue next school year. However, it will look different because we as a district are be gonna begin to own more and more of the trauma-informed responsibilities. We took the time this spring to restructure our organizational model. We took time to restructure our training and offerings and quickly I'll go through both. First, our organizational model, we have six groups that are leading our organizational change. In no particular order here, we have our district steering committee, which is a district admin team in the partnership with UB, our district subcommittees, our messaging, training, community outreach, which some of you may be involved with currently. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Our trauma-informed toolkit trainers and district-wide trainers. These are specialized trainers that provide some professional developments, whether it is at a faculty meeting, a department meeting, they may have spoken to you within your building. Our district administrators, our school building principals, we have our administrative team, that work is gonna continue. Our staff and student champion teams, that is gonna 
continue and looking to expand that even further next year. And our district response team, where our district response team is there to support our crisis teams or our building level teams in the event of an emergency. So as Mr. Laurie opened with tonight, that at GJ Mann, that there was a situation that the team responded to in a fantastic manner. It was a crisis event, but it also had a lot of trauma components to it. And again, they did a fantastic job. If it required additional support or extra eyes, that's where the district response team comes in. Wanted to share that example because it's new and we're not quite familiar with what that team's responsibility is. So we have as a as a as a district, along with our, our stakeholders and our groups that have participated in this all along, we thank everyone again for their participation. We created a checklist of our spring, summer, and school year activities. Just want to take a second to talk about our summer activities. First, we have a two-day retreat for all of our school-based champion teams. That's in July 18th and 31st. That is led by folks at the University of Buffalo. We have our toolkit trainer. That's on July 29th. Again, the important piece to that is that is specific to the building where those trainers can meet the specific needs of that individual building. Because as we know, all of our schools are just a little bit different and may have different needs. We are going to have our administrators, as we talked about, participating in a training in August. It's important that we continue with that. And something that I think is really important moving forward is that our school-based trauma-informed plans, for you folks that helped create those plans this year, they were created in the fall. I and mean, they were created a little bit separate from our ESSA plans. For the plan this year is that during the summer, while our SUP plans are being created, these trauma-informed work plans can be created to complement the work that is going to be taking place next school year. So those of you that are involved, please continue to work with your administrators on coordinating those activities. That will, again, will really help the individual needs of our school buildings and move our trauma-informed practices forward. Finally, our district subcommittees, they're going to continue to work with our messaging, with our, with our community outreach, which is the newest component of it. And that community outreach piece is going to work hand in hand with our student champion teams to really get that message out to folks within our community about the great work that is taking place in regards to trauma-informed and trauma-informed care within the Niagara Falls City School District. So that's a, a brief overview. I, the last piece that I, that I do want to mention, it's, a, it's something that came from state ed and because I know that a number of folks are involved with the crisis safety team that we've talked about that a couple of times in this, in this brief statement is that with our building level safety plans and our district level safety plans, there's actually now a trauma informed component to it with some trauma-informed language on how we uh, write our policies, but also how we respond to our policies within, um, or excuse me, how we respond to our crises within the building on each individual incident. So we're ahead of the game on that, looking forward to continuing this work. And if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Not bad for one inning of pitching, not bad. It's a good opening inning. Uh, one walk, no hits, three outs, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, let me uh, let me just do some punctuation. You know, we keep the man situation is so fresh in our minds. It was so well handled, but I like the uh, I like the language that I heard during that time. A lot of a lot of concentration about self care. Uh, I know that the, the teachers were worried about the self-care and trauma of students, and they did a marvelous job of that and, and in the school building. The principal was very concerned about the self-care of teachers, and I know uh, he was ex uh, acutely aware of the, of the teachers' needs and, and uh, the health professionals that were involved. And I guess in, in my case, I was trying to, because um, I want to give our administrators credit, I was trying to be as supportive as I could with the self-care and just checking all to make sure everything was um, covered for the principal. 
So it kind of goes all the way up so that we're all looking after each other in self-care. Something that Maria didn't mention, but I wanna put this on your radar that everybody must be ready for in September is we have a ton of trainings, uh, a ton of trainings. Uh, there's Vector, are most of them Vector? Most of them are Vector. That will include workplace violence, et cetera, et cetera. It'll also include the famous Ray Granary 2D training that I failed six times over the last two years, three times each year. All that training has to be done yearly. So please, that is serious, it needs to be done. You'll have a schedule, you'll get it over the summer. I remind people to be careful about going into buildings. Call your administrator if you need to get into a building. There's a lot of work going on. Uh, the school improvement plans, I think are really, really good. And I don't think Rick has a lot of plans to change the format. There will be academic goals and social emotional goals that fold in with trauma-informed care. Uh, so that they are coming up, uh, something to look forward to. Um, something that I have to make everybody aware of. First, a giant thank you. Uh, our school district budget passed with 84.3%, the highest passing rate in Western New York of 37 school districts. 1,507 to 208. Thank you all of you who supported the budget. Uh, we really appreciated that. That prevents a lot of uh, what I would say hardship for our kids in terms of busing, supplies, materials, and for our community in terms of using our facilities. Big kudos and thank you for that budget passing. However, I must tell you that we have begun working on the 25-26 budget right now. And Rick and I were sidebarring <clears throat> when Maria was speaking about the 90 plus. Uh, we no longer have American rescue funds. They're gone. They're all accounted for and gone. We spent them in a good, financially responsible way, all accounted for, all audit ready. They're gone. We used the board, used $6.2 million worth of reserves. That was the gap. That allowed us to not lay any FTEs off. That allowed us not to cut any programs. That's always the goal. The budget gap next year, if my preliminary look, and, and I have to be looking forward, looks like it's about $9 million. So I, we have to start working on that now. We have to be financially prudent now for next year. That includes the closing of this year and next year. There are some things that are unfortunately not included in the budget that we may have gotten accustomed to and used to over the last three or four years uh, that really helped move us. But now we're going to have to do it with a little bit, uh, a fewer notches on our belt, which has got, which has, has got to get tighter, because you know we, I have to, and I'll take ownership of this with the team. I have to work that nine million dollar budget down, and every you know, everything that we do now compounds for two years down the line. So I really have to be very, uh, we have to be very judicious. We have to institute a few more processes that say, um, we got to take a look at that before we can say yes. Sometimes they may affect some of the extras uh, that, that, that we've been able to really nicely do for kids. Uh, we'll take them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I don't want to go through a litany of what they are now, but we will go through them. Come on. Please tell a friend, a colleague to listen to this if they have a few moments. Uh, 48 minutes after the close of this, you will be getting a survey. As someone said, well, we all said, you heard our areas of responsibility. You know our areas of responsibility. Reach out and ask. Don't try to figure it out or find out at Starbucks, Target, or anywhere else. Reach out and ask us. Reach out and ask one, reach out and touch. I feel like a Diana Ross song coming on. Reach out and touch. Um, Mary Wilson, Diana Ross, some of the Supremes are starting to float into my head. That means I'm getting punchy and ready to close this webinar by saying um, I will be attending one baseball series the, the year this year. It is in Philadelphia, Phillies and the First place, New York Yankees. I think leading the uh, the uh, baseball in um, in uh, you know their, their particular category, 
and a plethora of concerts to be followed up with in September when we come back on. Everyone, we have a little more than two weeks, three weeks to go. Uh, please, please come out and support your, our kids. Please slow down, be conscious of everything that's going on. The year isn't over. These are often the most difficult days. We need to keep our kids focused. We need to keep our kids engaged. I know it's difficult. Uh, days like today were nice because it wasn't burning hot outside, but those days are still coming in our last 10 days. So uh, hang in there, we'll do it together. Roger and Gene, you got anything for us? No, other than I hope everybody has a great summer. Right? Yeah. Tone, tanned, fit and ready. Yeah. <laughs> Roger, do you have anything for us? No, just uh, best to everyone for a great summer and thanks for everything uh, up to this point. Yep. I appreciate everybody. We have a good school district. We need to get better always. That's part of what we do. And uh, thanks for your attention tonight. And for those that will be listening on replay, mm -hmm. the stories will all be the same. So have a good evening, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Good night.